Hi, I'm Dr. Tony Mork, uh, board certified orthopedic surgeon, endoscopic spine specialist over the last 14 years, uh, having dedicated my practice exclusively to endoscopic spine surgery uh, during that period of time for the treatment of chronic neck and back pain. Today, I'd like to talk about a case uh, that I saw in the office earlier this year and then more recently. Uh, this is a case where spinal pain mapping uh, really helped me to identify the pain generators originally and then once again when the pain recurred. In this particular situation, this is an 82-year-old gentleman with, a, a multi, with spondylosis throughout the lumbar spine, multi-level stenosis, uh, and a very small area, uh, maybe one or two centimeters in diameter, of really local or focal back pain, six centimeters to the left and midline at about the L3-4 level. When I saw this gentleman, I, I didn't exactly know what it was. I, I really got a sense it was a stenosis uh, and, and the foraminal canals. Uh, just let's take a look at his uh, a CT of his lumbar spine. You get a sense of what I'm talking about here. In this case, you can see that we have multi-level uh, degenerative disc disease, almost complete loss of the disc, bone-on-bone -bone contact and spurs on the back of every level. Uh, so it just he's got it everywhere. To oddly, and oddly enough, less at L5-S1 than the other levels. He has foraminal stenosis uh, that also occurs at each of these levels that correspond exactly with these type of findings. Okay, so here's the clinical story. 82 years old, pain particularly with golfing and with lateral bending. Uh, Multi-level uh, stenosis and degenerative disc disease is seen. Uh, and, and so I decided that since the pain was so focal in nature over to the left and midline, that it may have been stenosis affecting an exiting nerve root. I did a selective nerve block uh, at, of the L3 nerve root as it exited at L3-4 and got 100% relief of his pain. I didn't continue the diagnostics any further than that. With that, I did a, 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 just an a endoscopic uh, transforaminal decompression, which I will show you right now. So as we see here on the left-hand side, there's a trans facet decompression of the foraminal canal, L3-4. The transfacet decompression is seen here at L3-4 as well. And just take note of the other areas of significant foraminal stenosis at 2-3 and 4-5 and 5-S1 certainly. This surgery gave him really complete relief of his pain for about three months. And then he started to develop a slow steady increase of left low back pain in the same area before. So I told him, I said, well, let's go back and do some more spinal pain mapping. And this time I thought, well, I'll just give the facets a try. I didn't really think it was the facets because the pain was so local and so focal, but I tried the facets. Sure enough, as we look at here in the picture, injecting 1% xylocaine mixed with some uh, depamedrol into the base of the transverse processes above and below the area of pain and then let him move around like he was playing golf and bending, doing some lateral bending uh, at the time of the uh, injection, he had complete relief of his pain. So my final diagnosis was, uh, again, facet syndrome after a successful uh, decompression of the foraminal canal 3-4. This is going to be a perfect case uh, for a Wolf endoscopic uh, facet rhizotomy. Uh, in the event that his pain returns. So far it's been about uh, a month or six weeks and his pain has not come back after the blocks that were performed uh, at that time. Well, what have we learned here? Well, number one, I think spinal pain mapping is a great thing to do even after a primary surgery, uh, it can, which worked fairly well for just a few months, but I think we had a complicating situation of uh, facet syndrome. So what, if, what else have I learned about this? Certainly, that looks like a selective nerve block maybe was responsible for blocking a portion of facet pain initially, and that's why he got partial relief with the trans uh, facet decompression and then had a return of his facet pain. Number two, I think spinal pain mapping is a, is a great technique, especially if you're anticipating doing a possible surgery. And again, I think it reproduces what the patient will experience after uh, uh, getting a uh, rhizotomy uh, using the uh, Wolf endoscope in, in this particular case. Number three, I think this shows, again, 
how asymptomatic, very significant uh, foraminal stenosis can be uh, when people have this back pain, which, which can just be from the facets themselves. Well, hey, listen, I think that you could be a real hero uh, by providing uh, endoscopic facet surgery after successful spinal pain mapping and facet blocks in this particular case, even after the person's had surgery. So uh, again, I, I just think that this is a great way to go. The blocks predict uh, how much pain relief will most likely occur after a, a rhizotomy, and in this case using the Wolf uh, endoscopic rhizotomy set, which would be perfect for this situation. Thanks a lot. Look forward to talking to you soon. Take care.